We talked last day about inside corners and pay streaks. Now, the information I gave you last day was sort of a generalization, sort of the larger picture. I'm going to focus in a little more today to a single gravel bar, a single inside corner, and how I would sample that corner to see if it possibly had a pay streak going down or to find that pay streak. You don't necessarily always find your typical pay streaks on gravel bars. Welcome, sir. Okay, you don't always find pay streaks on gravel bars, but there are certain creeks that really create nice pay streaks. Uh, Mission Creek over here in Kelowna is great. You find the right gravel bar on it, you find that pay streak. It's only a few inches wide, maybe a foot wide. And you follow that, you can travel a long distance following that pay streak. So if we had a river, <coughs> let's draw the shoreline, big inside corner of this river. You've got water flowing. I think I get a new blue pen. You got water flowing down this river like this. You have let's get rid of that pen. Stop. You have your tree line up here somewhere. You have trees. Grass. You have the greenery up here, and this here is a big exposed gravel bar. Now, at high water, this water was flowing all the way over that gravel bar. Gold only moves when he travels down a creek. Gentlemen? Gold only moves or travels down a creek during flood, during the high water. So we have to view this creek as if it was full to sort of see that the water is flowing this whole width of the creek going over top of this gravel bar. It's an inside corner. So somewhere on this gravel bar through here is going to be that pay streak, if it's there. It could be anywhere on this bar. Often, often it's way up near the top, but it's not always there. And the pay streak moves year for year to year because the amount of water that comes down during spring runoff, sometimes you have high water, sometimes you have lower water, and each runoff creates its own channel where the gold deposits. Okay, for argument's sake today, we're going to say that the pay streak uh, is coming down the river here somewhere. It starts crossing over this gravel bar there, and it goes off out that way. We're going to say that's the pay streak. Welcome, please have a seat. When I'm testing a gravel bar like this, this is a big, large area, vast area. I don't know necessarily where to even start looking for that pay streak. So typically what I'll do is I'll stand back and I'll sort of read the bar, I'll look at it, and I'll get myself a good idea of where I think it might be. And then I'll start sampling at that point. One of the good ways to get that idea is if you stand right on the corner and look downstream. Can you pay attention? Put that down. Thank you. And look downstream or upstream to the next corner. Say you can see over here somewhere that the river makes another corner and you can see there's a corner here that all this water is going around. If I stand there and look over to there, I can sort of say, okay, the pay is going to be in between there somewhere. And then I just make an educated guess of where I might want to start digging. Say, okay, right there, I'm going to start testing. I will dig down and do a few pans there and see how much gold I find. Let's say I dig down there and I find three flakes of gold in my pan. Okay, there's three. It doesn't tell me much. I will then start working my way up the bar. I will work there, there. I'll, I'll start making a trench basically up the bar and seeing what the gold does. So I had three in the first one, three in the second, three in the third, four, then two, and then one right at the top. Okay. So really the gold didn't get better or worse. It just kind of stayed mediocre. 
Okay, not much there. I'll start going the other direction. I'll start working down, pan after pan after pan, working down the, down the bar. And say I find, okay, another four pieces there, then I find two, then I find three, and then I find 15 flakes. And then I find 30 flakes in a pan. And I keep working, and I start finding 15 again. And then two, three, one, four, five. Now I get an idea as I've worked my channel across that bar that, okay, it's mediocre everywhere except in this range. In this range, all of a sudden, it gets good gold. Cross the bar. I found one spot on that pay streak. From that point, I will go to where I found the best gold and start working sideways. Not across the bar, but sideways along the bar and start seeing if I can get an idea of where that pay streak might be traveling. You can either start right there and working sideways or you could go and start sampling over here somewhere again. And if you find that good spot, just draw a straight line between them and you pretty much, there's your pay streak. But in this case, no, we'll go to where we found 30 flakes in one pan and we'll start going sideways across the bar. Let me erase that for a second. As I start working sideways along that bar, along that pay streak, I know I hit it good right there. 30 flakes right there. Good, good, good. As I'm working sideways, I will check each of my pans and say I get another 35 and then a 25 and then a 15 and then a 10. All of a sudden it starts getting less and less and less. Well, that's because when I was working sideways, I was slowly going out away from that pay streak. And if I see that it's starting to get low going one way, I'll start working out the two sides of my trench a little bit, seeing if one way is better than the other, and try to re-aim re myself back onto that pay streak. And then I can continue on going down that pay streak and I might move off it this way. And all of a sudden my pans start getting five and six flakes in them. Again, I've lost the streak. So I'll test one side and the other side. If one side's better than the other, I move that way, move back onto that pay streak. We have a gravel bar like this on Mission Creek that we work all the time, and it's got a beautiful pay streak going down the whole bar. It moves year for year, depending on the runoff, and this is how we work it. In the spring, after spring runoff, when we don't quite know where it is, we will cut ourselves a trench across the bar, panning the whole way. Now, we have a pretty good idea of where it is, where that pay streak is. So instead of going across the whole bar, we actually just cut a trench across where we think the pay streak is going to hit because we're probably going to hit it within that uh, range. We find in that trench the one spot that is hot, and then we start making that trench moving out. Usually I'm with a friend, so one friend goes upstream, one friend goes downstream, and we keep working a trench along that pay streak. That pay streak is in there, and we keep working that little section. And sure, once in a while, our trench will go off to the side. We will lose the streak. We go off there, all of a sudden we get no gold. So in that, in that situation, we test both sides, find out which one's better, obviously the one on the streak is gonna be better, and then we move our trench back onto the streak. One year we hit this bar hard, we ended up having a trench. That went the whole length of the bar. We actually did go up into the water flow up here because if our trench actually cut through this bank, it would have filled with water and we would have diverted some of the creek, which is a no-no. Not supposed to divert the creek. So we cut, we did this trench the whole way, filling in behind us, 
filling in behind us with big rocks, but we basically hit the whole thing. The next year when we went back, we found that, what was higher? I think it was higher. We found the whole pay streak was up there. And we started doing the same. We didn't hit it that hard that year. One other thing you may notice on a bar like this, there might be multiple pay streaks. You'll probably have the one best one that runs through the bar of when spring runoff was at its highest point for its longest period of time. That creates a good solid pay streak. But water levels fluctuate. And if it was up high for a whole long time, and then it dropped down medium for a bit and stayed there for a week or two, you may have a lesser pay streak out here somewhere. Maybe it went really high for one day only. You might have a great pay streak way up there, but the main one is down below. You may have multiple pay streaks. And it's good to sample that whole bar to see where those pay streaks are. Now also, each year creates its own pay streak. And the following year might not erase the previous year. Really depends on how hard the water is running. If the previous year was a really low runoff, and then the next year was a really high runoff, it may wipe out that pay streak altogether. If one year is really high and then the next year is really low for runoff, that really high year may still be there as a good pay streak. So you might have multiple pay streaks going down that bar. I went back to Mission Creek uh, just a few weeks ago and noticed that the pay streak had been worked pretty hard, so I wasn't going to bother with it. So I just tried for fun, checking right down near the water's edge, do a little trough down there, and sure enough, I found a little pay streak. I found something that I could work. And on one side, I got two flakes. On the other side, I got one flake. On that pay streak, I got about 12 or 13 flakes in the one pan. So pay streaks make a big difference. Okay? And you make more blocks. There you go. Sampling across the bar to find the pay streak and then lengthwise with the bar to follow that pay streak. Make sense? Make sense? Okay, next day, we're gonna talk about big rocks in the river and how they affect pay streaks and gold deposits. You guys happy? Any questions about pay streaks? No questions about pay streaks, come on, someone, someone, yes. Uh, how big are the trenches that you build? Ah, uh, at that one place, some people are building trenches that are four or five feet wide. Like how deep? And actually, at, at this one spot on Mission Creek, uh, the gravels are a foot to two feet deep before it hits this layer of sandy clay. And, and we know the gold is sitting on that sandy clay, so we only have to go down to that level. Uh -huh. um, just in this one spot. Every creek is different, though. When I try to work Mission Creek here, I try to keep my trench as narrow as possible because I know the gold is only falling in a thin, thin line. And if you can stay on that line, you're good. If you vary off it, it's nothing. Excellent question. Okay, we got some projects to build today. <laughs>